السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. I'm wondering how we were able to see the hands. I don't see anybody. <laughs> okay. Uh, the only reason I can say, I, I can tell this hall, mashallah, is full because when I walk in, there's people all the way to the doors. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless your efforts and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gather all of us in Jannat al Naeem. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward tremendously those who organize this uh, conference. Uh, and as myself was involved in so many conferences before as an organizer, I know how much, how much effort and, and time that you have to put in such, um, basically, uh, to organize such gathering. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward them, to reward their family, and to reward those who come also from different places just to gather today or in these days for one reason is to please Allah and to please their Lord and to meet their brothers and sisters. And don't underestimate your steps to this place. Don't underestimate the amount of rewards that you will receive by just being here today. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam said, you want me to tell you who's among you will be uh, among the inheritors of paradise. قَالَ هَلْ أُخْبِرُكُمْ بِأَحَدِكُمْ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ One of four, do you mean to know who will be among the people of paradise? Then I was expecting the one who prays Allah, the one who gave charity Allah. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, النَّبِيُّ فِي الْجَنَّةِ وَالشَّهِيدُ فِي الْجَنَّةِ وَالرَّجُلُ يَزُورُ أَخَاهُ فِي نَاحِيَةِ الْمِصْرِ لله في الجنة. The Prophet ﷺ said, the Prophet, the Prophets, they are going to be among the people of paradise. And the martyrs, they will be among the people of paradise. And the one who leaves his or her house just to go visit their brothers, just to be with their brothers and sisters, they will be among the people of paradise. And the Prophet ﷺ also told us that Allah the Almighty said, وَجَبَتْ مَحَبَّتِي لِلْمُتَحَبِّينَ فِيَّ وَجَبَتْ مَحَبَّتِي لِلْمُتَزَاوِرِينَ فِيَّ The Prophet ﷺ told us that Allah, the Almighty Himself, said that my love, it's Allah's love. It's not the love of a friend or a spouse or, a, or somebody that you, you dare and you admire so much in this worldly life. It's the Almighty, the Creator Himself. He said, my love will be given to those who love one another for the sake of Allah. And those who visit and meet one another for the sake of Allah. These narrations and them, they are the only reason for someone like me and so many of the guest speakers today uh, to not only to travel from Houston or California, I'm willing to travel wherever a good people like you will be, even if it is the other side of the world. Where do I come from? From Houston. <laughs> uh, today I would like to address these two questions that the brothers just mentioned. Where do I came from, or I come from, and why I am here? Islam has the answers for this. For us as, some, as a people of faith, as a people who have a book that we refer to, as a people who have a guidance from our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who came with a guidance and light to enlighten for us our life. To be able to answer questions like this, which is so many philosophers through the history of humanity, they were debating over why we are here. And so many people, even from different faiths, different religions, they address this issue. And the only people who have the guidance from their Lord, they have the answer for this, which is very simple. Where, we came, uh, where do I come from? We as human beings, I answer this in two parts. The first part is related to us as a race of humans, as human beings. We all belong to one single human. We all came from, one, from a couple, 
from Adam and from Eve. We believe in the creation theory because that's it's not a theory, it's a fact. And it's the most factual thing that we believe in as Muslims, as a people of faith and as a people of belief, that we descend from Adam alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ya ayyuha nasu attaqu rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum min nafs. الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة. O mankind, have taqwa, fear Allah. Uh, the one who created you all from one single soul. And from that soul he created its spouse, which is Adam and Eve. We all descend from Adam alayhi salam. Also the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa said, كلكم Adam, wa Adam min turab. All of you belong to Adam. No matter how different we look, our looks look like, or our uh, race, or our tongues, we all belong to one single man, which is Adam alayhi salam. What that means to us, when we know that we all descend from Adam, and we know that Allah told us plenty of information about Adam alayhi salam, what that means just to know that you are the son of Adam, that you are a children of Adam. One, there is no place, there is no room for racism. There is no room for someone to say, you know what, I'm better than you. Or even for a male to say that he is better than a female. Or a, 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 a black better than a white. Or a white black better than a, a, a basically a black person. Or somebody he is from this caste or that social background, he feels that he is better just because he belonged to that race or belonged to that culture. Because in the end of the day, we all belong to one single great great grandfather, which is Adam alayhi salam. What also that means to us? It means to us that we descended from a prophet. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said, Adam awwalu al-anbiya, kama fi al-musnad wa ghayri. Adam is the first prophet. We all as human, we know and we feel and we believe that we descend from a prophet. Our great-great-grandfather was a prophet and a messenger of his Lord. Believe me, this is completely different than somebody believed that he descended from an ape. Don't you think? If you think your great great grandfather, some ape in, in trees in Africa or in, in, in somewhere in the world, it will be different than you believing that, you know what, I descend from a prophet who Allah honored, who Allah talked to, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised his level. That's completely different feelings. We know as human beings that we all belong to the best of the best of the creation which is Adam alayhi salam, which is Adam alayhi salam. Allah have honored us as a human race with so many ways by just making us the children of Adam. Adam is your grandfather, the one who angels prostrate themselves before him. وَإِذْ قُلْنَا لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ اسْجُدُوا لِآدَمْ When we told angels, they prostrate themselves before Adam. Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever thought about your great-grandfather as someone who's the angels prostrate themselves before him? If one of you, one of his grandfathers is a great lieutenant or a great king or somebody is very famous in his culture, will be always bragging about it, proud of. You know what? Your great-grandfather was a prophet that Allah talked to him and Allah made the angels prostrate themselves before him. Also, one of the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored us with by knowing that we're descending from Adam, what we call it a taklif, which is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have given us the responsibility to carry his religion. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. إِنَّا عَرَضُنَا الْأَمَانَةَ عَلَى السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَالْجِبَالِ 
فأبين أن يحملنها وأشفقن منها وحملها الإنسان إنه كان ظلوما جهولا ليعذب الله المنافقين والمنافقات والمشركين والمشركات ويتوب الله على المؤمنين والمؤمنات وكان الله غفورا رحيما Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is an amazing verse. And there is one word, I, it's my favorite word actually, in these two verses. Which is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that we have given al-amana. What's amana means? Anybody knows what amana means? Amana, it means trust. What is trust? If you look at how the scholar interpreted this word, trust, they said, trust, it means al-Islam, the religion that Allah give them the responsibility of carrying this religion, of implementing this religion, of practicing this religion, of delivering this religion, carrying this religion everywhere and practicing it. And it's amazing. Why would Allah choose the word amana, trust? Why would He call it trust? In this word, there is a clear honoring for you as a human. Because who would you gift the trust? If you have something valuable, a trust, and you want to give it to someone, who would you choose? Someone who is very trustworthy in your eyes. That's right. Since Allah has given you this amana, have given you the honor to carry his religion, it means he has entrusted you with it. He trusted you with it. And that's in itself make you feel that you're a person who is Allah in Allah's eyes, a trusted person. So don't betray the trust because if you do, you will be among the first group of people Allah mentioned later on, which is the hypocrites. Then the disbelievers. As for the believers, Allah will deal with them with His mercy and He will favor them, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, Knowing that we're descending from Adam, it knows, we know that basically where we belong. By the way, we belong to paradise. That's where our grandfathers used to live. And that's what we should go back to. You don't belong to any other place other than heavens. Believe me. That's where I, originally we came from. You know, some, you, you may hear some of your parents, maybe some of you hear their parents sometimes, back home, back home, back home. You hear this word, okay? You know what's our back home? Is paradise, is Jannah. As Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah said, go march farther to, forth to Jannah, the paradise, because that's where we belong to. And that's where our parents and grandfather used to live. Brothers and sisters, if you know that, you know that this is where you belong. And that's also make you live this life while you're aiming back to go home. Because nothing like home. Just knowing that we're descending from Adam alayhi salam, we know that there is a connection between all humans. Connection between all humans. And that connection, it is deeply rooted in our soul because Allah told us that He created us from a body, then He created our souls. That's why when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made Adam and fashioned him, He said later on, after He was created from a mud, like, like the way you look like today, Afterwards, Allah have blew into Adam or ordered basically the soul. He created the soul by his words and he let the soul enter the body of Adam. So you as human made of two things, body and soul. Just knowing how you were created, it allowed you to deal with yourself based on light. Noor, so you know how to treat yourself. It's not about only building muscles. It's not about only taking care of this body and forgetting about your soul. And that's why every one of us, every human, it doesn't matter what is his religion is. There is, some, there is somewhere in his heart, in her heart, a spot where they are connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they realize and they know their creator. 
For us as an individuals, not as a race, we know that we all know where we came from. Inna hadaynahu sabil. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, we have guided you human to come out of your mother womb, as Ibn Abbas said. SubhanAllah, the baby, when at the time of delivery, he will basically, the he or she, what the baby, it will move and it will put their heads down so it will come out from its mother's womb easily. Allah guided you to come out like that. We know where we belong to. Once there is a great lieutenant and general was walking with full of arrogance in a time of war. And there is a, sh a scholar, his name Mutarrif ibn Abdullah ibn Shakhir, saw him walking like this with full arrogance. And as Muslim, we don't, we not allowed to have arrogance inside our hearts. The Prophet ﷺ said, you will not enter paradise if you have as master seed of arrogance inside your heart. Listen carefully, master seed of arrogance, not two pounds of arrogance. Master seed of arrogance. Okay? He walking with, with full of arrogance and so proud of himself. So Abdullah ibn Mutarrif told him, the way you're walking is not the way that Allah, this type of walk, it's hated by Allah and his messenger. Don't walk like this. Walk with humbleness. He said, do you know who I am? He said, yeah, I know who you are. You are a person who were created from a lowly sperm. And you will be soon a rotten corb. And in between, you are a carrier of your feces. That's who you are. Why are you so arrogant for? That's who you are. Why are you so arrogant for? So when we know where we came from, we humble ourselves. And by the way, humbleness is not to think less of yourself. Humbleness, it is to think less about yourself. So make sure that you don't mix between these two things. Also, this is well. Let us realize a very interesting fact. Everybody knows how you were like 15 years ago, 20 years ago, maybe 50 years ago. It depends about your age. How you grow up from being just a baby to a child to teenager to basically an adult. Then you became an old. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran told us that we go through all these stages. What that means to you? you no, there is no one point in your life you stop unless you die. And this is also another fact that every human will come to an end. Every life would come to an end. Ya Muhammad, you are going to die and everyone else will die one day. Ya Muhammad, ahbib man shi'ta fa innaka mufariqu. Jibreel shid Muhammad, love whomever he wants. One day that one you love will come, uh, will die, will pass away. So this is will let you know that life is keep moving, keep moving, keep moving. And that means you cannot at one point in your life just to say stop. Actually, as I, I love to say that, life is like riding a bicycle. The only way to keep balance is to keep moving. The moment you stop, you lose balance in, in your life. Also, it shows you that this fact that how you came how you came to this world life, it teaches you several, it teaches you several points. One, that as you started from nothing, you're going back to it. As you will not exist, you will not be exist. So are you ready for that day? I don't care how old are you, because the angel of death doesn't care. Death doesn't care. How old are you? How healthy you are? What kind of health insurance you have? What kind of medical record you have? They, they don't care. With death, when it comes, it just strikes you. Wherever you are, the death will hunt you down, will be after you. As for the other question, which is why I'm here? Why am this? Why Allah created you for? He told us. 
وما خلقت الجن والإنس إلا ليعبدون. I have not created humans for nothing but to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all of us knows that theoretically. I'm not going to repeat the talk that you know we are here to worship Allah. Great. But you know what? We know that. But there is, a, there is one spot in your heart. Sometimes you know that I know that I, I know that I have to worship Allah. But sometimes you feel like you're not submitting yourself completely yet. You didn't take that decision to change your life and to commit yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This story I shared with some of my students of a friend of mine who was basically shooting an episode in Mecca. And in the middle of this shooting the episode for one of the TV stations, the cameraman keep going outside to smoke and come back. So the sheikh told him, why don't quit smoking? So he said, Sheikh, pray for me. Like so many smokers, pray for me. He said, you want me to pray for you? It was Ramadan, the last third of the night. He took that smoker in front of the window and look at Mecca al-Kaaba. He can see al-Kaaba. He raised his hand and he started praising Allah, mentioning Allah's names, attributes, glorifying the Lord, subhanahu. And the guy was so moved by the basically invocation and the prayer to the extent that everybody in the room was in tears. And he kept making so many dua, so many requests about that Allah bless his wealth, his health, his children, his family, every good thing you can think of in this world of life and the jinnah and the hereafter, he kept asking Allah for it, for that man. And the guy said, Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. And in the end, he said, Oh Allah, don't give him anything from this if he doesn't quit smoking. The guy was like so excited. Amin, amin. When he said that, he said, oh. <laughs> you know, he never said amin. You know why? Because he was not ready to quit smoking. He just said it. Pray for me. You all know, and we all know, that we should worship Allah. But are we ready really to take that move and that spot and to touch that spot in our heart, to make that decision, that commitment, that I will make my life, I will make my life, the whole entire life, is not to be in the masjid, no. The whole entire life will be ruled by the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's what worshiping is. Worshiping, it means obedience, to submit yourself to your Lord. That's what you, that's why Allah created you. And believe me, the benefit of this is not for anyone but yourself. The benefit of this, the reward of this, is not for anyone but yourself. In this life and in the next. So many times we forget that this is not, a, that's not it. This life is not the only thing we have. There is still another life coming. So many times we just forget about it. with all this busy life. We forget that one day we'll go to the next one. You know what? The brother offered you an iPad. That's right. I, everybody, oh, that's very good. You know what? If I give you the choice between two houses, one house made of gold and one house made of wood, or bricks. Which one would you choose? Gold. Type. If I tell you no, you know what? The one from gold is going to be a temporary house, and soon it will basically vanish. And the one from wood, it will be rem it will remain as a safe shelter forever. Which one would you choose? Gold, most likely. <laughs> That's human being. But what if the issue is? A house made of gold forever versus a house made of bricks and wood for a very temporary short time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gather us in Jannat al Naim, in houses made of gold. And, and, and with our Prophet Muhammad, I want to keep uh, yani, uh, my speech on time, inshallah. So I'll leave. Uh, 
microphone with our guest speaker. Thank you very much. Salam alaikum.